What do you guys think? Are you guys ready? All right, please welcome to the stage Julia Lewis and Christina Ricci. You can do better than that. There we go. There we go. Okay. I think you have the best of the best right here. Oh, let's stop. Okay. <laughs> well, first off, thank you for coming back, Christina. This was nice to have you back. Thank you. It's been great to be back. Yes, and this is your first time here. My first time, I keep saying Steel City. Is that obnoxious? No. I just love that little nickname. You can have a nickname for Pittsburgh. All right. Yeah. Steel, Steel <laughs> City, woo -hoo! So it, it's, it's a really great con. It's a lot of fun. We want to thank you guys for coming out. I have a few questions for you guys. We might as well start with Yellow Jackets. How did that project come about, and uh, what drew you to it? Do you want to start? It was the most incredible script I'd ever read, and... I was, uh, it was such a fresh, exciting idea. I was so excited to work with Christina. We both came up together. I felt like a big sister, and um, I couldn't believe, uh, we finally are working together late, but, but, but it's great. I know, great. we've known each other sort of peripherally yes. for like 20 years or something crazy. Yeah. yeah. How did you guys first meet then? On what, on what project? Or? I went to Juliet's birthday party, even though I wasn't invited. Um, <laughs> when I, I think I was 20. 20 years old? So Wait, I've like, got to find the, the pictures. Roller, it was a the, roller, the skating roller skating party. party. Yeah. <laughs> she I had crashed just moved my... to LA. <laughs> and everyone was like, we're going to Juliette Lewis's roller skating birthday party. And I was like, sweet. Sounds great. That is so cute. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> but back to Yellow Jackets. How did you guys prep for the roles? Were there anything that was a bit more of a challenge than normal? Um, for, for me, really, uh, like when, um, you know, you sign on to these shows based on one pilot script. So my character just had one scene in the show, um, and I really loved it because I've always sort of been fascinated by people who commit elder abuse. Um, and so I was psyched to, like, get into the pettiness and the mind frame that somebody has to be in to do that kind of thing. And so that's really what I was prepping for. I think for my character, there's a lot of physical transformation stuff that sort of achieves a lot, of, that, like, takes a lot of the work out of my hands, you know? So that's that. I loved seeing her transform into a sociopath, but with a great smile. <laughs> She's fun to play, but we had so much fun together as well the first season. We got to be together for most of our early episodes. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys have any favorite moments from the show that you could share with us? Either behind it's the scenes or on It's pretty much any time we would hang out, because we would just chit-chat, chit-chat, yeah. chit-chat, and then they'd go, and action. Yeah. And then I'd be really mean to her. Really mean. So mean to me. Um, but I really loved, too, like, we would have all these, uh, we had a bunch of, like, night shoots where it'd be like all of us in a tent, a smaller tent than this, um, and our chairs and our snacks and some poor, poor being having to run errands for us. And it would get to like three in the morning and everyone would just be the silliest you've ever experienced. And that's my favorite. I, Juliette Lewis at three in the morning is a real good time. Guys. I get really slap happy <laughs> and very perverted sense of humor. Yes, like a 14 year old boy. So it's a good time. <laughs> So in your opinion, what elements of the show have made it such a big success? I think that you can't ever see what's coming next. I think that, and then also I'm, the cast to me is just so spectacular. I, I think it's so fun to, I think that, you know, I as an audience member love to see people behaving badly. So I think that it's, it's fun and um, sort of like wish fulfillment to see these women behaving terribly in their 40s. You know, well, we're supposed to have all of our shit together, you know? So. What was the, uh, not to talk too much about Yellow Jackets, but what was the audition process like? Was it fairly laid back, I a lot of pressure? Of Baby, we don't audition. Come what? on now. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We've been doing this 30 years, so they, sorry. They called us. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Oh, we I were like, sure. That. I love to hear that. If you really want us, sure, maybe. Uh, those are the, I like to hear those stories. But we had many years in the early days of auditioning. Yes. yes. But I'm yeah. saying it. 
Um, I want to go back into, like, actually, I want to start with you, Juliet. You have, uh, you've been acting since uh, 14 years old. Your father's an actor. Yes. Um, did you get much training early on, or did it just come to you naturally? I think, like, a lot of the arts, it's fairly intuitive, uh, or you either have a real strong desire for storytelling or, or not. Um, but I, it did help that I would go visit my dad on movie sets, and so I was very used to the environment. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, I'm so moved when people mention that they've seen my dad at these cons like 15 years ago and show me a picture. Mm -hmm. I have to try not to cry, but it's so sweet. I feel like it's him saying hello. Um, but that was my early introduction was through my dad. And it was sort of, he didn't lay down heavy advice. It was just sort of being in the environment helped a lot. That's nice. And Christina, you got started rather young too. How did your, what's your career journey? Um, yeah, I started when I was eight, I think, doing like commercials and some TV appearances types of things. Um, and then I started, uh, I got my first movie at nine and um, yeah, just kind of kept going from there. Back to you, Juliet. I got to ask you about Karen Black. Uh, she mentored you early on. Am I yeah. correct with that? I love that you have very serious, thoughtful questions, and then we go comedic from time to time. <laughs> Straight <laughs> but, back. Yes. Karen Black, I consider like a, my creative mother. We would go to her house and play charades. I was friends with her son, and that was my early part of acting. It was just sort of make-believe. She would give us kind of... Uh, situations to play and um, that was really exciting but that's the quality of my work I try to bring a lot of um, make-believe and very intuitive uh, stuff but then of course when you are on the job you learn very specific things and I feel like all my directors were my teachers like Scorsese and Oliver Stone and people like that my teachers <laughs> yeah they're amazing and, and back to you Christina um, you do some pretty unconventional work Wednesday Adams Lizzie Borden how do you prepare differently from that or do you really are you drawn to that is that something you see as a challenge I mean I just I like things that are complicated and um, that take a little bit of effort to like figure out the mindset and to justify the actions and those are generally characters that are a bit more extreme mm -hmm. and more challenging I'm also just not believable as like the girl next door or like when I say I love you on camera, it sounds like I'm lying. So I, this, this is just what, I, what, I, what I'm good at. And you can see that when you're reading a script for the first time? Well, the thing is like Juliet's saying, like you have to be, as an artist, it has to be something like that you want to do, that you, you know, like most people don't get into the arts unless it's something they have to get out or, um, so when I read a script and the character is just not compelling to me, I know that's mm -hmm. not someone I should okay. be playing. And we're going to switch to uh, vacation films with Chevy Chase. Oh my Chase. goodness, can you believe it? <laughs> that was the luck of the draw. I was Audrey for life. <laughs> and I see people at airports and everywhere and that I'm in, the, in their family every Christmas. It's so beautiful to me. Um, how, how did that come about? That I auditioned for. Ah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Chevy was very nice to me, and um, it was just a really fun set. I'm trying to get Johnny Galucky at one of these things. He's ah. the last signature that nobody's gotten. That was a very special film. I was 15, and uh, we had a lot of fun shooting that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Christina, how do you stay motivated? as an actor? You know, hopefully the work that you're doing and, and the things you're signing on for are interesting and compelling and mm -hmm. challenging. And um, I think that's it. I think when you have great material to mm -hmm. work with, then it is uh, very motivating. Would you mind getting some questions from, oh, I gotta ask you about the licks. I gotta ask you about your band. Okay, so we used to tour forever um, and now it'll just be sporadic shows because they're all in other bands. Um, my guitar player's in The Offspring. They're on tour right now. But we How many people know about our band? Licks. <laughs> Freddie. Um, <laughs> yeah, my son loves her band. That's cute. Okay, so we have three festivals we're going to do this year. So look for them. Louder Than Life, and I'm forgetting the other names, but in October 
in um, Sacramento. But anyway, I post about it all the time, anytime we're playing a show. And, and any chance of getting back into the studio? Yes, I'm recording now a little EP. We'll have a song at the end of the year. Oh, yeah, nice. I love it. I love it there. so much. Awesome. All right, the folks have been waiting for questions. And uh, whenever you're ready. Yeah, we're going to make a line right here. So yeah, come on if up. anybody oh, has a question, just kind of move out into the middle aisle. No trampling, no kicking. Bribes will be taken, though. You get the first question. Yep. Uh, two questions, one for Julia, one for Christina. Um, do we have any interesting stories from National Born Killers? Because that's so, like, interesting. Do I have any interesting then, stories from Natural Born Killers? And then the second question is, any ghost stories from Christina Ricci? Wait, what? what? Ghost stories from Christina Ricci. Do you have any ghost stories? Cool, cool. Any like stories from the sets? Okay. Yes, so I get to say that I walked through live rattlesnakes in Natural Burn Killers because we did. But they were far away and it was cold at night and obviously me and Woody survived. So that was good. Um, <laughs> there's so many. I, I really love that movie because I trained. Uh, it was the first time doing like street fighting and I learned how to take apart guns and shoot them responsibly and I'd never touched a, a, a weapon before. Uh, so that was really exciting. And a lot of things, uh, Oliver Stone gave us a lot of freedom. So all the, a lot of the lines you remember is stuff we came up on, with on the fly. I love that movie. I might write a book about it someday, but we'll see. And then, so you wanted a ghost story for me? I, I don't know. I mean, okay. So... <laughs> The problem is that I don't believe in ghosts, but at the same time, I do feel like I there have I, You've it's, been haunted. It's very conflicting. I'm very conflicted about it. Um, so anyway, this one time in a hotel that I felt I felt weird in in London. Every time I'd go to set, I'd come back and my toothbrush would look like somebody had scrubbed the cracks of the bathtub with it. Oh my god. And I thought that was weird and aggressive if it was the <laughs> housekeeping staff. Um, so I went and said something like, I, I can't imagine someone would be doing this and just leaving the toothbrush because you're definitely gonna get in trouble for that. But apparently somebody keeps brushing the floor with my toothbrush and we kept getting, I kept getting a new toothbrush and it kept happening. And finally one day they were like, well, I was, no, what I said was, I was like, I mean, unless there's a ghost on that floor, and they were like, well, actually, the third floor is known for having a ghost. And I was like, <laughs> great, amazing, <laughs> wonderful, amazing, thanks so much. And so then after that, I started, because I was like 19 and alone in London working, and so at night, I would just be in the hotel room watching reruns of Friends from a DVD player that I got, uh, and a DVD I got to feel less alone. And I would just be sitting there, like, drinking and watching Friends. And I started talking to the ghost, yes. hope, hoping that it would then leave me alone. Yeah. And this one time I was talking to it and like, oh, can you believe Matthew Perry said blah, 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 and put my drink down. It was just ice in the glass. And I went to the bathroom. When I came back, the glass had been turned upside down. And there was ice all over. And I was like, all right, so cool. So you're here. Which, which, which Friends episode should we watch now? So that's my ghost story. story. That's amazing. Awesome. We have to talk to it. <laughs> Next question. Hi, Juliet and uh, Christina. Hi. It's very nice to meet you. Again, I saw you uh, yesterday. Yep, that, nice uh, to see you again. <laughs> I got a two-parter question for both of you. That what is your thoughts for the last season, the last episode of the second season? Our thoughts about it? Yeah. For well, the last we were, season. I mean, the second season. It was that was a that was a hard episode. I think we were all really um, sad uh, because everybody loves Juliet, and we didn't want to see her character get killed off. And I certainly didn't want to be the one to do it, and I didn't want to hold her crying. <laughs> I didn't want to cry over her dead it was body. Sad. <laughs> so it was sad. It really was. And what do you have any thoughts of what's going to be for third season? If there's going to be one. Oh, there the is going to be a third season. We start shooting in a month. Um, we, of course, the nature of the beast, I know nothing about what's going to happen at all. So, I mean, my guess is as good as yours. Okay. Someone's going to die. That's all I know. <laughs> I feel like it's safe to say for that show that somebody, somebody dies. Don't, don't say 
say that yet. I'm not prepared. I'm not prepared I mean, yet. somebody dies. I'm not saying it's going to be anyone you care about, but definitely there will be bloodshed is all I'm saying. But thank you. Thank you. All right. Hello, Julia and Christina. So wonderful to have you with us. I met you yesterday, Christina. Yes. Nice to see you. Well, first of all, I, before I get to my two-part question, I want to thank you both for most of the films that you did over the years. For you, Juliet, Kate Fear, Strange Days, What's Ian Gilbert, Great, thank you. and The Basketball Diaries. Right on. And for you, Christina, uh, Mermaids, The Ice Storm, Now and Then, um, The Matrix Resurrections, and of course, one of my favorites, Speed Racer, where you played Trixie. Thank you. So um, my two-part question. So my two-part question for the both of you is: What can you say about some of your experiences on some of those films? And out of all those, most of those films, which film projects would you both consider your favorites, and why? I would say my favorites are exactly what you remember me from. They were incredible experiences. Like Cape Cape Fear, was. Um, yeah, thank you. Was so um, just Scorsese was so helpful for me as a director, and it really helped me form my instincts uh, to uh, to be the creative person that I am today. But uh, there's too many to mention. The other sister with Gary Marshall, he one of my favorite experiences ever. It was just so much sweetness. Uh, we put our hearts into it. Yeah. Yeah, I. Uh... Gosh, it's so hard to choose favorite, favorite projects, you know, because they, you know, when it's been a third, like my career has been my whole life. So a lot of them coincide with like the age I was or what I was going through at that time or whatever. I had a really incredible experience doing a movie called The Opposite of Sex when I was 17 and ended up very, very close friends with Don Roos and Diane Bukatinsky and lived in their house when I was 18. They didn't know what was happening. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to move in with you guys, okay? Because I don't want to go back to New York. Um, but uh, it was, that was a really wonderful experience, a movie I'm really proud of. Um, I'm also really proud of a movie called The Ice Storm. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, my name's Ryan. I'm from Canada. I'm such a huge fan of you guys, both of you guys. So I have, I have two questions, one for Juliet and one for Christina, if that's okay. So Juliet, you mentioned uh, The Other Sister, and that's actually the film that I was going to ask you about. As a kindergarten teacher, you captured Carla's playfulness and innocence so well. Uh, what was your process for developing her as a character? Thank you so much for that. It was loosely based on the producer's sister, who's very high functioning. And so I, me and Giovanni Ribisi had uh, met with different people and I just wanted to fill that uh, character with a lot of integrity. And as you see, it's her fight for independence, which is something I related to a lot. And then also her joy. She, it really rubbed off on me. Like I would clap for no reason in, in my own life because she was so joyful. I was also inspired by my little niece who was just developing. So I would watch her and play with her and just be very childlike. I love that movie so much. Thank you. It's amazing. Um, and Christina, and I guess this could also be for Juliet too, because you guys both work Jessica Lang, you in Cape Fear, you in Prozac Nation, which are both amazing films. Um, what, uh, what did Kalang impart any wonderful advice or acting tips or stories you have with her that you could share? You know, I was such a huge, I am such a huge fan of hers and was so excited to be working with her and um, quite intimidated, actually. But to, to just watch her, and she's so incredibly emotional and you, there's so much, her, her energy's so strong and there's so much simmering, like, right underneath the surface at all times that I think as an actress, it just really, watching her really reinforced to me how available all your emotions need to be at all times. And she seems to, with, well, when I worked with her, it just was like, she just seemed like someone who had so much that she was keeping contained and available at any time. And that was something quite interesting to watch. Thank I agree you. with that. Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you. Thanks. All right, I've seen the, the size of this line. Just try to keep it at one question per person so everyone can get a chance. Yeah. yeah we oh. only got about 10 minutes. Hi, Juliet. Hi, Christina. My name's Phoenix. Um, my question is for Christina. 
your portrayal of Wednesday Adams is like iconic, incredible, and there were so many amazing moments and lines that you delivered. I was wondering which one of Wednesday's moments has stuck with you all these years later. I have to say, my favorite scene to shoot with her was um, at this in, in the second uh, the second movie at the summer camp when she burns down yes. the set. Yes. And I was. Um, I was really excited to set things on fire. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, next question. Hello, nice to meet you guys. Hi. Most of my questions have already been asked, so I just wanted to say uh, love you in California. And my son wants to know how it was filming with Doja Cat. Oh, she was very nice. Uh, hi, <laughs> is this your son down here? Hello, sir. How are you? <laughs> Doja Cat was very nice, and we had a, it was a really, actually a very fun, creative experience. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> I like to embarrass my child also. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun. All right, next question. Hi, lovely ladies. Thank Hi. you for coming to Still City. Uh, my question is, what do you guys like to do for fun? When you're not working, etc. <laughs> I like to walk in the mountains um, and be with my partner, who's delightful. And he's going to teach me to drag race. So it's a little dream of mine <laughs> to be a legal, legally drag race on the street somewhere in the mountains. Street. Legally drag race <laughs> on the street. There's a whole community where I live, so that's what I'll get into next. That's fun. I'm so jealous. I, don't, I have children. So, I mean, I'll just rediscover my hobbies when I'm 60. <laughs> Hello, ladies. Thank you for everything you've done. Love you all in Yellow Jackets. I'm so truly... Are you um, either interested in producing like Margot Robbie or Drew Barrymore? Yeah, I mean, I've been producing since I was, um, like, I, I mean, I, I guess the first, since I was 20, um, I've been producing off and on uh, movies and a TV show, and right now I have a production company and we're looking to produce TV and movies still. So yeah. She's ahead of me. I'm writing a script that I'll direct and be in, and that'll be in the future. Not so far away. So we only have time for about four more questions, so please keep that in mind. Only four more questions. They'll be heading back. Actually, you're going to be doing a photo op. You're heading back to your table after this for signing? If you say so. <laughs> I don't have that power. Hi, so I, like many others, fell in love with Yellow Jackets, and specifically just the characterization of each. And I was wondering how much you worked with the teenage cast to create your character, or did you look at it more as like two separate characters, pre-trauma, post-trauma, or? We worked a great deal with the younger uh, versions, or, or younger characters, and the, it's a testament to the casting, because intuitively we worked very well together, uh, Sophie and I, and we just talked about um, her, Natalie's likes and, and which, uh, all kinds of things, and we both sort of shared the same ideas. And um, with Samantha, our, Misty is so specifically written, and uh, I think for us, we, we both talked a lot about the challenge of kind of grounding that character. She, sometimes she's written in a very broad, comedic way, and uh, I think that most of the challenge that Samantha and I faced, and we talked about quite a bit, was about finding really um, the truth of that character and the reality of that character. And if this person really existed, like, what would the, you know, what would, I don't know, like, the core of that person be? Like, what's wrong with her? And where does this come from? And that, and um, I think with someone like that, it's just really about trying to not let her become a clown. And so Samantha and I talked a lot about that and about um, the differences that we thought that the two versions we'd have given the span of the 30 year sort of time span in between. How you doing? My question is for Juliet. What was it like working with Robert De Niro on Cape Fear? The best. It was the best. He obviously is playing a psychopath in that movie, but in, in working with him, he was so 
uh, gracious and kind, and I felt very supported on the set so that I could excel and um, we could do the tango dance of emotions that you see on screen. Um, but it, it was such a, I grew a lot on that film, and it was because of him and everybody involved in it. Okay, got time for just two more questions. Hi, this is for both of you. Uh, what is your favorite uh, part of playing your respective Yellow Jackets characters? I love, there's a few scenes I love because I love behavior. Uh, there was one scene where Natalie walks out of a hotel and she's hung over. And so I love just that heaviness. I like to emulate energy. And so she was, because she was toxic and on different sub substances at different times, I like to have that weird energy <laughs> at any given point. Okay, and I believe this will be our final question. Well, but, uh, I, I didn't answer. Oh, yeah, I'm very it's, important. It's my turn. It's her, sh <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, no, no, do that, please. I just, I, I like, I, you know, as an actor, I like, I like the moment. I guess it's like a similar thing, where I like the moments that are, don't have a ton of dialogue, you know, where you are walking to a place or doing something active. Um, so I think... With Misty, I like any time you see her executing a plan. I think that's really fun. And last question. Hi, I'm Sandra, and I enjoy both of you. So I'm just kind of curious, who's your favorite actors you've worked with? Oh, my God. Well, I love working with Juliet. I'm really sad. <laughs> that's season three. I'm really sad, too. <laughs> But, uh, I, you know, I was lucky enough to work with Raul Julia when I was a child, and that's one of my fondest memories. He was such a lovely human being, an incredible actor, so I feel very lucky about that. All the ones you'd expect. Woody was fun, De Niro, George Clooney. Oh, yeah, so. Christina, Miss Christina. This is our reunion right here, guys. This is the reunion right here. Please give it up. Christina Ricci, <laughs> Juliette Lewis, you can do better than that. Okay, see you at the table. See you at the table. Thank you so much. That was so wonderful. Oh, thank you, dear. Once again, they're still in the tent. Give it up.